The most viewed wristwatch videos tend to be one of two things. Videos that compare popular watches to counterfeits, and videos that discuss cheap lookalikes of famous watches. But what's the difference between the two? I've made a few videos about homage watches myself, but how do these differ from fakes? if at all. In this beginner's guide, I'll be delving into the details of homage watches, what they are, why they're so cheap, the pros and cons, whether they're legal or not, and if they're worth your consideration. To be clear, you can spend your money however you want. Really, I have no problem with that. My aim is just to give you the full picture and both perspectives to help you decide if they're right for you. Let's start at the beginning then. What are homage watches, or homage watches as some people say it? Well, on paper, a homage watch is a watch whose design takes inspiration from an existing timepiece, likely bearing some visual similarities. In essence, these watches are paying homage to other watches. In reality though, most homage watches on the market today are just budget clones of famous watch designs with a different logo stamped on them. Most new watches at least take some hints from watches that have come before, as the sheer number of historical releases will ensure there's some overlap. After all, there are only only so many dial, handset, case and marker combinations to choose from, unless you're thinking extremely outside the box. The degree to which the copying occurs determines whether it's a true homage or in fact a clone as I like to call it. To simplify things in this video, I'll refer to these homage watches in one of two ways. True homages to describe watches that take inspiration from existing timepieces while maintaining their own unique elements, and clone homages to describe brands who copy and paste existing famous designs and rebadge them. The Nazumi Tonnerre Chronograph is a good example of a true homage watch. The designer took inspiration from several previous watches, including the Oya Skipper and the Abercrombie & Fitch Seafarer, without directly replicating either. It maintains a different handset, along with a unique case shape and chapter ring. This Pagani design is instead what I like to call a clone homage. While masquerading as a homage, it's in fact a direct copy of the Rolex Submariner with the vast majority of the watch looking identical on the surface, outside of the logo, of course. If you switched the logo, you'd likely think it was a Rolex, at least from a distance. The Pagani is obviously not of the same standard. Basically, they've not changed anything with any artistic intention. From day one, Pagani clearly set out to copy the Rolex design as closely as possible. Some brands, which I'll refer to as homage brands, are solely dedicated to the production of these clone homages, with few or no original offerings in their repertoire. Of course, there are some watches out there that aren't as clear cut and don't fall into one of these two distinct categories. What's the difference then? How can these clone watches even be legal if they're just stealing designs from other companies? And where is the line drawn? Surprisingly, homage watches are generally considered legal. As in many industries, it comes down to technicalities. It's somewhat of a legal grey area, with these homage brands appearing to remain just within the law, likely due to the minor adjustments they do make, including the obvious logo change, as well as small, often microscopic alterations to certain parts or proportions. Despite looking near identical on the outside, many of these low-cost homage watches are also kitted out with different and less expensive movements than the watches they're based on, which can necessitate a fractionally different internal layout. Nevertheless, some large watch brands have been known to take legal action against these pretenders. In the early 2010s, AP sued a bunch of pretenders, including Swiss Legend, Movado and Tommy Hilfiger, who all made watches that looked near identical to theirs. It's unclear why more big watch brands aren't heading down a similar path though the tsunami of upstart homage brands likely means their attempts to stem the tide could be expensive and ultimately unfruitful. Within the last couple of years, we've even seen brands like Pagani Design rebrand as Pagurni Design in certain regions, possibly in an attempt to exploit a legal loophole or avoid litigation from the similarly named car brand. True homage watches are, of course, perfectly legal, as they've not directly ripped off existing designs from other brands. Talking about ripping off, we need to talk about fakes for a second. Replica watches, aka counterfeits are copies of watches posing as the real thing. These replicas differ from clone style homages primarily because they use the original brand logo and are usually marketed as being the genuine article. These replicas are illegal in most developed nations. Surprisingly, it's not just luxury watches that are being copied these days. Counterfeiters have even been known to fake budget pieces, such as Casio Digitals. Is the buying incentive for homage watches the same as that for replica watches? Outside of those who've been tricked, I'd say 
Often, yeah, most people buying homage watches appear to do so because they like a specific design but can't afford the real thing, which is suspiciously similar to the logic used to justify the purchase of replica watches. In some cases, there's a concrete overlap between the two camps, such as in the Jeannot controversy of 2019, where the founder of popular Rolex super homage manufacturer Jeannot was allegedly outed as the man behind an advanced Rolex counterfeiting operation, dating back well over a decade. While no lawsuits appear to have been filed, the evidence presented is very compelling. You know what's also compelling? Our sponsor, WatchCrunch. Built by fellow watch nerds who grew tired of the negativity and blingy flex culture on other platforms, you know which ones I'm talking about, WatchCrunch was made to promote better, friendlier watch discussions from the ground up. On watchcrunch.com, you'll find a huge variety of watch content, including reviews, articles, pictures, videos, Q and A's, and more, with their team adding additional content and features all the time. I reckon this sort of product has been needed for a while. Loads of existing forums use clunky, outdated interfaces that are a train wreck on mobile devices. Watch Crunch, on the other hand, is extremely easy to use, no matter what screen size you're viewing on. And your contributions are even rewarded with beautiful badges that you can display in your profile. Customize your feed by following particular brands and tags, make new horological finds with the ingenious Discover tab, and engage with like-minded watch lovers from across the globe in the comment sections. It's free to use, and you'll be set up in a matter of seconds. Sign up now using the link in the description. So why are some of these homage watches so cheap then? Is it because they're bad? True homage watches, when done well, can be a tasteful way of generating a new yet familiar aesthetic. Due to the costs associated with designing, manufacturing, and marketing these watches, they don't tend to be much cheaper than wholly original watches. Clone homages, on the other hand, often boast high specifications for unbelievably low prices, making them a very tempting proposition. How is this so? While most larger brands are known to have fat margins on their luxury watches, charging thousands for watches that likely only cost a few hundred to manufacture, the clone brands can sidestep much of the hard work associated with wristwatch production, allowing them to come in at substantially lower price points than most other types of watches. Here are some things to bear in mind. Clone homage brands don't have to spend much time or money designing new watches and can quickly just copy the big brands without worrying about litigation associated with true counterfeiting. Clone brands can ride the coattails of the marketing effort for the pieces they've copied. People who see the big brand ads but can't afford the real thing are likely to actively seek out budget alternatives. To some extent, it's like free marketing. This is evident as many homage brands even use copied terms like Submariner or Explorer in their product names and descriptions. Sometimes they even stamp it right there on the dial, even if it's not technically correct. These brands don't have the cost associated with building a brand or maintaining a website as they can just sell directly on existing online marketplaces. You see this time and time again with the likes of AliExpress. These watches are also usually produced in China where labor costs are cheaper than the likes of Switzerland or Japan. This can come with uncertain labor practices too. These homage brands solely use off-the-shelf movements. They're never made in-house. Many of these brands often cut corners in quality control too. Now big brands do have their quality control issues but especially with some of the really cheap homage brands quality control errors are incredibly frequent. It's also worth mentioning that these homage brands usually don't have proper water resistance certifications. A lot of them just stamp whatever claim they want on the dial and it's often an unproven number. They also have limited customer support alongside limited warranty and returns policies. It's not nearly as easy as just sending something back to Amazon. Nevertheless, in some ways, these clones could even be seen as having upsides, in addition to the high specs for low price, of course. Some argue that they allow people to access expensive, traditionally pay-gated designs for a fraction of the price. Consequently, they're also pitched as a cost-effective way to basically test drive a watch, to see if you enjoy its size, style, or feel before pulling the trigger on the real thing. In a similar vein, online commenters often justify their homage purchases by stating they feel too worried about wearing something worth thousands on their wrist, given the potential for damage, loss, or theft. While all of the above are valid arguments with their merits, those same points could equally be used to defend counterfeit watches. The whole idea of trying something before getting the real thing suggests that that thing is inherently not the real thing, and that it's inherently some sort of substitute or fake. Still, some homage watches are designs that are taken from vintage models that haven't been in production for decades. 
One such example is the San Martin SN004G, which is a revival of a Rolex diver from the 1950s. Given that the original watch is near impossible to track down in decent condition or for non-astronomical prices, and that Rolex has never attempted a reissue of this piece to date, the SN004 effectively gets a free pass. Rolex relinquished its moral hold on the design when production ceased, at least in my books. There may be more arguments both for and against that I've failed to mention here. I'd love to hear your contributions in the comments. Now I'll try and answer some of the most common questions I get about these watches. Are homage watches bad quality? Generally, no. From my experience, most well-known homage brands offer anywhere from average to excellent build quality on a material level. You can find our recommended brand list on our website for more information on the best brands to stick with. There's a link to that in the video description. While quality control can be sketchy, especially with those cheaper ones I mentioned earlier, the same can be said for many large Western brands like Seiko. It's just that with these homage brands, returns might be a bit more of an issue. Are homage watches bad in a moral sense? Obviously, you have your moral compass, so I can only give my opinion here. Let's be real, most of these homage watches, they aren't paying homage to anything. They aren't offering luxury designs for low prices out of the goodness of their hearts or to show artistic appreciation. Rather, they're cashing in on someone else's design and hard work and getting as close to counterfeiting as they're legally able to get away with in order to maximize revenue. Homage brands like San Martin have told me that their clone designs are unsurprisingly their best sellers, so they continue to produce them to this day. As a fellow business owner, that approach is totally understandable from a financial standpoint. Though personally, I tend to steer clear of homage watches these days as I just don't feel good wearing them, especially when there are much more original alternatives that I know I could be wearing instead. True homage watches use aspects of previous watches to provide a fresh take on the concept while still making money, resulting in more of a win-win situation as far as I see it. It is a far riskier play though, which often doesn't pay off, unless the team behind it is particularly experienced in design or business. The number of brands that I've seen come and go since the start of this channel truly is astounding. Are homage watches bad investments? Financially, yeah, due to the poor brand recognition and the sheer competition in the homage sector, the resale value of homage watches tends to be quite poor. I know this firsthand having sold several review units over the years. They just don't fetch a great deal of money back even when compared to your Seikos and Orients. In terms of enjoyment though, perhaps not. If you buy a clone watch and it meets or exceeds your expectations, I guess that could be seen as a good investment. After all, that's the point in buying a watch, isn't it? I've shown both sides of the coin so far, but now the something I need to get off my chest. That being the huge rise in these value comparison comments, as I'm going to call them, these usually go along the lines of, the watch in your video is rubbish, I can buy a blank insert Chinese homage brand for 30% less money with a sapphire crystal and 200 meters water resistance. Now I get where these comments are coming from. I appreciate that specifications are important to the performance and value of a watch, and they're also useful tools for comparing similar clone brands to one another. Nevertheless, when using this methodology to compare clones to unique original watches, I think many commenters are experiencing tunnel vision. They're equating value to specifications alone without considering any of the reasons why these watches are so much cheaper. If all watch brands went down the route of spamming out lookalikes to prioritize specifications, how stale would this genre become? That'd be like 10 designs tops. I think it makes more sense to compare clones to clones and non-clones to other non-clones. Should you buy a homage watch? Having watched this video, you probably need to decide exactly what it is that you want. Do you want a true homage watch? Are you after a clone of another watch? Or would you prefer something more original? Here's a summary of the pros and cons of the clone watches as far as I see it. The pros are, you get high specifications for the money. You get the opportunity to try expensive looking designs for far less money. Homages are less risky than having a luxury watch on your wrist. There are no wait lists or other BS that comes with buying a luxury watch. Some of these homage brands even offer colors that aren't offered by the original retailer or brand. Now to the cons. Obviously there's the unoriginal designs, though some of you may see this as a positive. There's also the poor resale value, inconsistent quality control, customer support or warranties, though this is brand dependent. Delivery can be very slow, but again, this is somewhat brand dependent, and watch nerds will instantly notice that it's not the real thing. If you think you'll enjoy a clone style homage watch and don't feel guilty about wearing what's effectively a stolen design, then there are a multitude of great value options available. If not, it's worth checking out some of our roundup videos, where we collate some of the best watches of each style, including dive watches, chronographs, and more, most of which are original designs. If you're interested in these copycat brands, check out the link to our blog in the video description, where we shortlist those that you should either buy or avoid based on our own personal experiences. Did you know one of these homage brands lied to me before about the originality of their watches? Check out this video on screen now to find out more. Nah, they were naughty naughty.